Right, how's it going? It's me, Shotty for HF, and this will be the first video that I've done like this. So bear with me, but what I'm going to be talking about for the next few minutes is this. This is the limiter number six gentleman's edition from Tokyo Dawn Labs. And I got this plugin uh, a little while ago now. Um, and I was just going to have a quick run through of some of the some of the features and why I like it. Uh, firstly, I will say it is definitely very good value for money. This was just a little under 50 quid. So, yeah, it was definitely worth it, and it's come in very useful so far, and I'm starting to use it on more and more projects. And it had some good reviews. That's what kind of drew me towards it. And firstly, I will say that some of the reviews are definitely right in saying that it is a little bit more than just a limiter. Um, there's quite a few features in here, so let's just have a quick look. First of all, as you can see, there are these different modules, a compressor, a high frequency limiter, there's a clipper and peak limiter, and then you have the meter, the output and the meter. Interestingly, these modules can be turned off and on. So if you literally wanted just the limiter section, you can have that. Obviously simplifies things a little bit, but... Um, so yeah, there's some sort of variations there with the plugin already. Also, what's interesting is you can actually move these around. So you can actually um, have a different order, a different chain. So for example, you know, you could put the compressor after the limiter and so on. Um, I kind of like it how it is, how it comes out of the box. Um, it's definitely useful for sort of adding gain, even like to a point it's it's useful for mastering as well but definitely good on sort of you know your pre master bus and stuff like that and also your drum bus um you can get some nice effects out of it that way and one of the things that i like about it is this button up here is either you can switch it between processing the stereo signal or you can have the mid side signal um which is and you can kind of do this um on every module and it turns the drive knob into these two sections here so you've got width drive which is the side information and then the sort of mono drive and this is really useful for adding some shine to to a track um i have actually got a track loaded in that i was just going to sort of experiment with um so quick i'm hoping that's not too loud this is just a track that I'm working on at the moment and I've literally just imported the the WAV. Um, it hasn't been mastered yet. The track's called um, Spray Paint and it will be out soon. Um, so I've literally just put this on. This is the default uh, as it comes out of the box and you'll see there are a few, um, what should we say, parameters here that at first glance it's like, what the hell do they do? Um, focus, for example, and separation. And yeah, it might be actually worth kind of reading the instruction manual for some of these um, because it's kind of not um, as, as straightforward, the naming convention of some of these parameters. It just, it's a bit different, should we say. So anyway, let's have a look at this. If I was going to... This is just great. Um initially for sort of getting some extra gain out of a track or you know whatever bus it is or if you put it on your master bus or whatever you can definitely get some additional gain using this plugin and also here um you have the metering section which is extremely useful um it measures in loudness units on this so you can have momentary loudness units you can have momentary max so what the, the max peak value is for, for the luffs there and um, short term and integrated which is obviously really really useful for checking the overall loudness of a track um and i will say i found this meter to be very accurate when comparing it to to other meters like ulean loudness meter for example um yeah it's it's pretty much spot on i haven't noticed any issues with it at all um obviously it's also got true peak detection um so yes it will prevent those inter sample peaks um 
so looking at this i'm going to play the track and just going to show you how i approach it just initially just to get that added gain um, and i'll be looking at the short-term loudness units um, which i think is measured over four seconds or three seconds um, so we'll have a look at that and we should get the reading up and then i'm just literally going to turn up the clipper drive and the peak limiter drive and i'm going to try and use both of them to sort of equal out the load to share the load so just to get that additional volume so i'm just going to play a section of the track <laughs> As you can see there, the, the luffs at the moment are around minus 14. So turning up the clipper drive, you, you can see the luffs going up there. And also the drive with the peak limiter, which I don't want to hit too hard. So as you can see there, I'm already going up to sort of minus eight luffs, and that is literally just from tweaking those two drive knobs on the clipper and the peak limiter. Um, and that's before you've even started with anything else. Um, I'm sorry, just I do have a awkward, an awkward loop set here. It's going to be very annoying when that repeats. So let me just adjust this so we get a bit more of a consistent loop. I'll do eight. So yeah, going back to the limiter. And um, so yeah, that's interesting that you can actually just get this additional gain literally from just that. And um, you have on the peak limiter a multiband mode, and obviously without the multiband, that's just a full band. Um, it, it basically just limits everything. And this is what I mean by maybe reading the instructions, but in multiband mode, the focus knob, when it's on low, um, it focuses on basically the low end and the high end transients. And you tend to get a bit more sort of limiting in those areas and it leaves the mid range alone, which is an interesting feature and it's very subtle. That's why I had a lot of difficulty when I first started using that, actually sort of like trying to work out what everything was doing because it is very subtle. But it's great because it just, you don't want to smash everything up, especially if you're kind of happy with the mix balance that's going into it anyway. Um, but obviously then the focus turned up will focus on mid-range transients, which you, again, you know, it's like if, if you have a hi-hat jumping out and some bass guitar that's really jumping out with a lot of sort of dynamic range, you can move the focus and sort of change which areas of the sound actually get limited the most, um, which is a very interesting feature. Now, obviously, we've got the standard brick wall limiting here and a look ahead as well, which kind of just changes the, um, the sort of transparency, if you like. As I say, there's so many functions in here. The mode of the clipper, which obviously adds a sort of like soft clipping distortion, and it's just great for getting that bit of edge and adding, at the same time as getting volume, you're also adding some character and some warmth. Um, and I will say with this plugin, with any of the, the, the sections, it's, it is best not to overdo it. Um, I usually find when you start, start going past sort of like 3 dB of gain reduction, um, you start you tend to notice the sound being colored. Um, and, you know, I have had issues where a little, a, a tiny bit too much does sort of result in a little bit of distortion in the low end. So you just got to be kind of careful with it. And I think these meters are great for that. You can kind of like zoom in um, and zoom out. So you can put it back to two, um, which is what I like to do. And then when something starts going past two, you'll see that the meter will automatically zoom out. So, um, Keep doing that. Like the peak limiter there is just zoomed out to sort of um, minus four dB. So um, I would probably, you know, play with the drive and and the threshold to sort of bring that back in a bit. Um, again, if you turn the multiband mode off, um, literally, then the the peak 
limiting is just distributed evenly across the whole mix of sound and that's it's kind of useful if you just want to preserve the way that it's mixed if there aren't any issues with the mix in the first place then it's a good way to go the modes on the clipper you, you do have a brick wall mode there for the clipper as well which i guess is handy if you want to turn the peak limiter off and just use the clipper but when you're using a combination of the two um you don't need um brick wall mode necessarily on both um you also have a, a ceiling here that you can set so let's say if you didn't want to go above minus one db um you can set the ceiling on the output which is which is really handy um but then you don't want to push the output too hard so again it's probably best to use a combination of the the thresholds um across those three um well across these two sorry and sort of manage it best that way and sort of keep it where you want without driving the output too hard um these do offer some slight changes to the sound. Um, low frequency clipping is essentially what it says. Um, it will focus the clipping on the low end a little bit more, but I, I, from what I gather, it's kind of like a little bit higher up. It's not like super subsonic low end. It's sort of more like the 100 hertz range to sort of 200 hertz range, I notice, does get clipped a little bit more there. So, and separation, um, basically, if you've got it at zero, it's it's full band clipping. Um, so it's kind of doing the whole thing. Um, whereas if you turn it up, it does multi band clipping, which kind of focuses on three separate bands with crossovers. So it's um, yeah, it just offers again, it's very subtle, but it does offer some slight changes to the way that it's clipped and you can kind of the warmth that it adds, you can move it to sort of different ranges um, just by moving this knob. So it's kind of like a just to taste and when it's needed, it's just if it's just not quite doing what you want it to do, then sometimes just playing with some of this stuff can just sort of gel it all together. The next thing I want to look at is just the compressor side of it. It's a very sort of smooth compressor, although it does have some different options down here. Um, and some are a bit more transparent than others. Some do have a bit of character um, with them. I tend to stick with Alpha for the majority of the time. It's just, it kind of does what it does. It's just got a nice release to it. It's a nice compression. But when I'm actually trying to bring out additional volume in a track, I tend to switch this into mid-side mode and add a bit of drive to this compressor before it even goes into the clipper and the limiter. Um, so I might add a couple of dB drive on the on the um, mono signal and then just a tiny bit more, even like 0.2 of a dB more on the stereo signal and drive it that way. And this just adds that tiny little bit of shimmer and um, just a bit of brightness, just kind of um, sort of spreads it apart a little bit more. And um, it's kind of like separates it a little bit and just adds that just a tiny little bit of stereo image. Um, so let's have a listen. So it's great because you can actually see the two needles on here are sort of representing the um, the gain reduction of the the mid and the side signal. Um, so if you if you find that the, the the stereo the side image is kind of jumping out a little bit too much in places, you can just add a little bit more compression to that, um, sort of using the threshold and and sort of even it out that way and really control the stereo image. Um, whilst still driving the the mid signal so very useful and already then a minute ago I think it was we're up to minus seven luffs already and that really is without sort of you know fine-tuning it and using everything there is in this limiter um, the high frequency limiter 
it is what it says. Um, it's kind of a bit like, I guess, a DSA in that way. Um, it's great. You know, it's got an independent threshold and you can set the frequency the, um, that you want it to focus on. And you can also do some sort of parallel processing with this when you turn up the dry amount. So again, it's really useful. There is definitely a lot in this plugin and as I've kind of got to grips with it, I've started using it more and more. Um, definitely finding this plugin very useful. And as I say, for the price, it's a plugin worth having, definitely. All I can say is using this one, it has some really great features and it has a really good sound to it. And um, yeah, if used correctly and not too harshly, it's it, very transparent. Um, and an all-round great plugin. There's probably a lot more to this that we could go through, but that's it for now. I just wanted to show you um, this plugin and how I'm currently sort of using it at the moment and what I've figured out so far, and I'm going to carry on experimenting with it. And yeah, I would definitely say check it out if you're looking for another limiter, because again, for the money, you actually get quite a bit more, um, you know, than just a limiter. Again, the compressor with the mid side is, you could literally just use that on its own and turn off the other modules. And yeah, once you start using that on some of your, say, you know, your buses for, I don't know, your instruments or whatever, or for your drums, you can really bring out some shine in the tracks um, if used in the right places. Also, I will say um, in precise mode, it can be a little bit CPU heavy, um, and then it's also got insane, uh, which is um, very good for you know mastering high end mastering, especially if you're on a high sample rate or something like that. But it does have the option for eco, and I will say on most sounds, I I expect you would probably notice more in in the low end. Um, you'd probably notice more kind of artifacts and maybe a bit of disruption in the low end, maybe on eco. But generally, for things like drums. Um, and even vocals and that kind of thing, eco really isn't a problem. There's there's really, you know, it doesn't stand out. It doesn't all of a sudden just lessen the quality. Um, in fact, I think you'd probably have to zoom in and see the actual samples of the, of the waveform to really sort of see what difference it's making because you just, you know, generally you can't really hear it. So again, that's great if you want to have a lot of instances of this um, on different buses and used in different ways you can set it to eco and there's really no problem there you know if, if you are struggling for cpu as well so so there's a lot of thought gone into this and i do like the fact that it it has this meter um you can also decibel um you know decibels full scale on there um and obviously your true peak um which is obviously very useful to make sure you're not going over a certain level and the lufts on here is really accurate it's really reliable um and it saves having to put another plug in you know you might want another plug in when it actually comes to mastering and you just want to double check things but generally when you're working with it it does save having to put another third party plug in in there or you know if you haven't got a lufts meter on on the output of your of your door or your your software then um yeah it's just handy to have so again lots of thought gone into this Definitely check it out. I'll leave a link in the description. If you've watched this far, thanks for watching. Um, I do plan on doing more videos like this, so if you found it useful, please give it a thumbs up and think about subscribing. That would help me out massively. So I'll definitely be back with another video. Until then, take it easy, keep creating. Until next time.